if you have fibers in your in your diet it passes slowly through the stomach but additionally you create layers in your in your stomach and thereby you're compartmentalizing your stomach so your volume is as large but the ph is mostly produced in the bottom and because you have layers on top of that the ph the h plus stays in the bottom and the bottom really drops in ph therefore it's better antibacterial your digestion works better and on top of that basically you you've got that other function storage Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast, we have Dr. Marco de Mick, who is a senior consultant in swine nutrition in the Netherlands. We will be discussing piglet nutrition, enhancing gas gastrointestinal health for a strong start. Dr. de Mick, welcome to the podcast, and thanks for joining us today. Before we dive into today's topic, could you please give us a brief introduction of yourself? Well, as already said, my name is Mark Kurdemik. Um, I'm working in the swine industry for, well, over a decade. Um, I've been a local nutritionist, I've been an international nutritionist, and now I work for Schotter Seed Research. And we are a research and a consultancy firm specialized on animal nutrition. Um, and my department is uh, is for swine. Excellent. Well, again, thanks for thanks for joining us today, and and is, we're glad to have you here. So, early nutrition and gastrointestinal health, right? I mean, that's a complex relationship to understand. Uh, around winning, let's talk about that. Let's start there. What are the biggest challenges of winning when it comes to intestinal health? I think that one of the things which is so different is of course the nutrients from milk to feed um, we all are we are all aware of that but there is also one major aspect really a physical aspect which is different um, when milk comes into the stomach that creates a cloth and therefore it only passes through to the intestine when the digestion at stomach level is basically optimal and only then it's broken down and it continues. That's not the case for, for complete feed. So there we already start with that physical problem. We can look at the nutrients and see that it's so much better digestible in case of milk. Uh, but mostly that physical aspect, that's where it's really important to really focus on stomach health and stomach digestion, because that's so different in piglets before and after weaning. Excellent. So, and, and continuing kind of on that same topic, then when we talk about, there is a lot of information out there saying, you know, talk about gut health, right? And that's kind of, kind of a, a loose term out there, but how does the stomach actually contribute uh, to the intestinal health? You know, how can we support uh, this through nutrition? If you focus first at the function of the stomach, the function of the stomach is storage of the feed, it is start of digestion, and thirdly, it is the um, bacterial barrier, the first barrier to kill bacteria. Those three things are important. So storage, digestion, and antibacterial effect. Um, so it all starts there. And in terms of storage, what we try to achieve is to have feed flow through the intestine on a really slow and a, a controlled pace. Because if we can do that in a controlled manner, the intestine has enough time to digest. And if it's properly digest, it will not flow into the large intestine. Um, and thereby harmful bacteria cannot um, start with protein fermentation and so on. So that's the first. So for storage, our goal is really to get a slow passage through the intestinal tract. Then we've got digestion, of course. Well, the protein digestion with, with uh, pepsin, um, you need to start that. And otherwise, the whole cascade later on is hampered. So also there, that's more on a nutrient level rather than on a physical volume level. 
that's important. And the uh, third part with, um, with the aspect of antibacterial effect, you really see that um, the pH needs to be low, at least below four, but still with piglet diets, it's in such young animals, it's really hard to get the pH so low. And therefore, how to manage that? You can play with physical form of feed, for example, with particle size. Um, there you see that how do you present the diet to a piglet? That's a really important topic. So these, these aspects are uh, already important. Why stomach health really relates to intestinal health. Excellent, and, and as we as we are aware, there are there are some technologies out there to potentially manipulate some of that um, some of that process, right? So, um, in that sense, with your experience, if we talk about like maybe prebiotics or ingredients, what which of them might be more effective in promoting some of that gastrointestinal health? Yeah. Uh well, if you look at fiber, you can actually take two aspects in there. You have either the fermentable fiber, which are indeed also the prebiotics, uh, but also the inert fiber. And I think that last part, the inert fiber, um, is something we do not focus on as much as we should. We mostly talk about prebiotics, probiotics, nowadays even postbiotics, but the inert fiber um that's a really important topic and we we have done quite some research in that field and we see now that adding inert fiber to your diet in a coarse particle size that really stimulates on one hand it stimulates the stomach health it makes sure that the passage rate through the intestine is really subtle and is you balance that that's on one hand but on the other hand the risk of fermentable fiber and prebiotics is if you overdose the level of prebiotics or the level of fibers in your diet in the large intestine, these produce a lot of volatile fatty acids. And if they are absorbed, perfect, not, no problem at all. But with piglets, if the balance is not optimal, then you see that fermentation in the colon also creates a lot of production of volatile fatty acids. If these are not absorbed in a quick manner, you will see that they attract water. Well, that's diarrhea. If you track water to the large in, uh, intestine, if it's, that's not absorbed well, you get this diarrhea, diarrhea problem. So you're asking about prebiotics. Can you work with that? Yes, of course. You can manipulate the balance in your microflora, so it can really help. Um, but I rather focus um, at the inert carbohydrates. And then we talk about ingredients like oat hulls, wheat bran. Um, and we've done quite some studies also in the correlation with E. coli and how that's diminished um, if you use these ingredients. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. So um, basically what you're, uh, if I understand what you're saying, can you explain a little bit more on, on what you mean with inert fiber? I mean, what, what kind of fiber is that and, and how is that helping the pig, you know, to balance um, a little bit of, of what you just um, discussed. If you take one step higher than fiber, you've got your carbohydrates and you can diversify them in three categories. You've got first got your digestible starch and sugars, then that's, that's absorbed in the small intestine, then every, the rest of it goes to the large intestine and that's the fiber part. And the fiber part then has two fractions. It's either fermented by bacteria in your large intestine, and of course also in the cecum, but mostly we combine that as large intestine. Um, and there, that's the fermentable part. 
Then the last group, that's the inert carbohydrates, they are excreted and they are in the feces. So basically, from an energetic point of view, they don't make sense. They don't contribute to any energy which can be absorbed. So from that perspective, they are useless. But really from a functional perspective, from a perspective of intestinal health, then they really add value. And they add extra value if you can add them to your diet in a coarse manner. And when I talk about coarse, we talk about particles of one to two millimeters. We're not talking about two, three centimeters. We're talking about piglets. We're not talking about cows. So it's only small particles, one to two millimeters. But generally, all our diets are smaller than one millimeter, all our particles in our diets. Um, so thereby, the inner particles are those who are excreted, and they have a functional, really health beneficial effect in mostly also your stomach because it increases retention time. And that's another thing which I have not mentioned. And I'm thinking now that might be valuable as well. If you have fibers in your, in your diet, it passes slowly through the stomach. But additionally, you create layers in your, in your stomach. And thereby, you're compartmentalizing your stomach. So your volume is as large, but the pH is mostly produced in the bottom. And because you have layers on top of that, the pH, the H plus stays in the bottom and the bottom really drops in pH. Therefore, it's better antibacterial, your digestion works better. And on top of that, basically, you, you've got that other function, storage. The storage is then separate by those fibers laying in the stomach. And thereby, you have that effect. So inert fibers, and are especially at stomach level, having this beneficial effect. No, that's excellent. And this, this is definitely a, a fascinating topic. And, and thanks for, you know, thanks for sharing that with us today. Unfortunately, that's, that's all the time that we have today. But um, this is uh, something that the way that you explain it a little bit is easier for, for us to understand. So. Dr. Demick, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, everyone, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Bed Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us for our next episode.